Hey, in this video, I'll walk you through the required steps needed to get the widgets that come with T-Board working with OBS and XSplit. If you're using OBS, the first thing you will need to do is install an additional plugin for OBS called the CLR Browser Source Plugin. You can download the plugin from the Open Broadcaster Software website and it is available for 32-bit and 64-bit. Once the plugin is installed, start OBS, go into settings and you should see a new entry on the left hand side called browser, select a runtime, then look for an entry called single process and make sure that is set to true. The default is false, so you have to change this to true. Then click on apply, click on OK and you have to exit OBS and restart OBS. The next step is required for both OBS and XSplit. So open up T-Board, go into widgets. And what we need to do is add T-Board or rather the widgets to the Flash Player trusted locations. There are several ways to do that, but an easy way is to, when you're in the widgets in T-Board, click on the eye icon, which will open the clock preview. Then right click, on the clock and select global settings. This will open up the global settings window. Go to the advanced tab, scroll down to trusted location settings. Now we need to add two locations. Add, we're gonna add a folder and the folder is located in your user documents. So my documents, then there's a folder called T-Board and a folder called uh, Widgets, this one. So select Widgets and click on OK. Then confirm. Then the next one we need to add is a URL and that is the URL used by default by the CLR browser plugin. When you add a local file, it prefixes uh, the path of that local file with HTTP absolute. So we need to add that as well, like this, and then simply confirm. So you need both entries, so absolute and then the path to the uh, widgets folder in your user documents. Then click on close, you can close this and close that. Now to test if everything works as expected, we'll add the clock widget. And one important thing to note is that you can only have one copy of uh, a widget active at all times. So what that means is if you want to use a widget across multiple scenes in OBS, you have to add it as a global source. So click on the global source uh, button, click on add, and we're going to add a CLR browser. I'm going to name this clock click on OK. Now I'm going to browse to the widgets folder, clock, and select the HTML file, so tboard-clock.html. Click on Open. The width for the clock, the width for uh, the different widgets are uh, located in the help documentation, but for the clock that is 400 by 100. So that's what I'll fill in there and then click on OK. And I click on OK to close the global sources. And now I want to add the clock here. I'm going to add global source clock. And there we go. I can now edit the scene, move it around, make it bigger, smaller, stuff like that. And if I now want to add it to uh, another scene, I do the same thing. I switch to that scene. I do add global source and then I select clock. There we go. Like put it dead center. Uh, there we go. Yeah, maybe a little bit higher. Okay, like that. So, and if I now switch 
from one scene to another, it will not reinitialize the clock because it is a global source. To add one of the keyboard widgets to XSplit, you click on Add, and then you click on Add Media File. And the difference between OBS and XSplit is that XSplit allows you to add Swift files directly. So don't select the HTML file, select the Swift file, click on Open, and it should add the widget. You can then, of course, do the same stuff that you can do in OBS, like resize and whatnot. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to it. So thanks for watching, and until next time.